Welcome parents and students. This recording is going to explain how the CAO system works. The single most important piece of advice any guidance counsellor can give a student is to do good research before you apply for any course in college. Every course in Ireland can be placed on the National Framework of Qualifications and this framework of qualifications runs from level one right up to level 10. When our students sit and sit their Leaving Cert and pass it, straight away they're at level five on the National Framework of Qualifications. The CAO covers courses from level six, level seven and level eight. A level six is a two year higher certificate course. A level seven is a three year ordinary degree and a level eight is an honours bachelor's degree. And this can be three, four, five or six years depending on the course that you can, that you select. The great thing about the National Framework of Qualifications is that you start, if you start at level five, you can make your way up to level six, up to seven and up to eight. Great sources of information if you're doing research is the CAO handbook, the CAO website, speak to your guidance counsellor teacher, Qualifax, Careers Portal and Access College. These are all Irish websites that have a wealth of information. If you're thinking about applying to go to college in the UK, then UCAS.com is a great website. Another source of information is attending open days, either in person or virtually. Also, it's worthwhile talking to students who are cur currently studying what you are interested in, or maybe past pupils of our own school. This is the Qualifax website and if you look in the centre of the screen there is a green magnifying glass and this is where you start to search for the courses that you may be interested in. Careers Portal is another excellent website and they have recordings, videos, interviews uh, about courses, career profiles and apprenticeships. The CAO stands for the Central Applications Office and it is based in Galway. What do they do? They process all the applications to undergraduate courses in higher education institutions. So by undergraduate courses, we mean any course where somebody is studying to obtain a degree. The higher education institutions mean the universities, the institutes of technology and the technological universities. The CAO provides the link between the exam results, which they get from the State Exams Commission, and the offers from third level colleges. CAO do not set the points each year. Who can apply to the CAO? Well, anybody can apply to the CAO as long as they meet the minimum entry requirements. And these are the requirements that a person needs in order to get into college. In order to apply for a level eight honours degree, a person must have a minimum of two H5s on higher level papers. Trinity College expects you to have three H5s. In order to get into a level eight, a student must also have four ordinary sixes or H7s, and they must meet minimum entry requirements. So this might mean having a H4 if you want in Irish, if you want to become a primary school teacher, you must also then meet the points for the particular course that you're applying for. If you're applying for a level six or seven course, you must have a minimum of five ordinary sixes or H sevens. You must meet the minimum entry requirements and the points then decide. The CAO has some important dates that you have to meet. It opens on the 5th of November. And the closing date for receipt of the early online application is the 20th of January, which is this week. So if you register before the 20th of January, it will only cost you 30 euros. The closing date for receipt of normal applications is the 1st of February, and this costs you 45 euros. So try and get it in before the 20th of January and you can save yourself 15 euros. If you're applying for a restricted course, you must have that in by the 1st of February. And I'll explain what restricted means later on. The closing date for receipt of late applications is the 1st of May, and this costs you 50 euros. The CAO 
opens again on the 5th of May and there is an opportunity for students to change their mind. So they can change their mind about the course that they have applied for. They can take some courses off their application or they can add some courses to their application. The 1st of July is the latest date for receiving any change of mind information to the CAO. So students must have their mind made up by the 1st of July at the very latest. In late August 2022, Leaving Cert results will be out and the CAO will make offers of college places to students. The CAO are very strict about deadlines and it is very important that you meet all their closing dates. Restricted courses involve portfolios, auditions and aptitude tests. So this might mean a portfolio for an art course, an aptitude test might be for a medical course or an architecture course, and you may have to do an audition for a music course or for a drama course. So those restricted courses must be on your CAO form by the 1st of February. Please do not leave everything to the last minute. The stages of the CAO application are, first of all, please do your research. Talk to people, attend open days if necessary, study to maximise your points, go on to the CAO website. Once you have registered with the CAO, they will send you a record of application. You can change your mind between the 5th of May until the 1st of July and the Leaving Cert results will be out in August 2022 and the CAO will be offering people places sometime in August or September 2022 and after you receive an offer you have about three days to accept your place. Please take note of the following. Apply online at CAO. There's an interactive demo facility on the CAO website and this goes through step by step each page that you have to fill in and there are lots of other resources on the CAO website as well. All the colleges post alert lists on the CAO website an alert list is information from a college about any changes that they are making. So there might be a change in the name of a course, they might be adding new courses or they might have cancelled some courses. So it's important to pay attention to those alert lists. Don't forget the restricted courses must be on your CAO form by the 1st of February at the latest. When you want to make your application, you go on to cao.ie and you click on to the application tab. You register here and you create your own account with a password. Please write down this password or save it on your phone or take a photo of it. Do not lose it. Once you pay your 30 or 45 euro fee, you get a CAO number which you must keep safe. Each time you want to go into your CAO account after this, you log into the tab My Application once you have your CAO number. Your CAO number is private and it must be used in every correspondence between you and the CAO for the rest of the year. The order of preference of your course choices doesn't matter at this stage, but it must be correct before the 1st of July. On your application, you'll be asked for personal information like your name, address and telephone number. You'll be asked to indicate if you're applying for Here, Dare or Susie. Here is a scheme that allows students access college on reduced points and it depends on family income. Dare is a scheme that allows, student, allows students to access college on reduced points and uh, this is based on whether you have a disability or not. And Susie then is a grant that students may be eligible for from the government and again this depends on family income. The application form also has space for your course choices. You pay by credit or debit card. So this is what the application first page looks like. You insert your surname, your forename, your title, your date of birth, and then you can indicate if you're male or female. On this page, you put in your postal code and your postal address. You must then tick a box to say that your postal address is correct. You put in your telephone number, the international dialing code for Ireland is 353. And then I would tick the next two questions. Do you wish to receive text messages from CAO? And do you wish to receive text messages from HEIs, the higher education institutions? And these, I would say yes to both of them. 
This next page is really important. All of our students must tick number one. And this indicates that they're sitting their Leaving Cert in 2022. And this is a very, very important box to tick because this is the link between the State Exams Commission, which have your exam grades, and the CAO. And then at the bottom of the page, you tick the box to indicate that you're paying by credit or debit card. Once you start to insert your course choices, you'll see a screen like this. And if you make a mistake, if you put in the wrong course code, then the CAO will bounce the page back at you. So this means it is impossible to put in the wrong course code. When you're filling in your CAO form, there are really two applications on one form. There are two lists, one for level eight and one for level six or seven. You can put 10 choices on your level eight list and 10 choices on your level six or seven list. So this screenshot might be what your application looks like. On the left hand side, we've got all the level eight courses and the right hand side, we've got the level six and seven courses. So our advice is put in the course that you want most, number one, your second choice, number two, and your third choice, number three. So you've got to be, you know, hope for the best and, ex and hope that you will get your dream course, number one, two or three. However, we've all got to be realistic. Maybe things won't go our way during the leaving search. Maybe we'll get sick during the year and we might not get enough points to get our dream courses. So we have to be realistic and put our realistic courses in at number four, five and six. And then we always advise people to have safety net courses, the courses that we're definitely going to get, uh, even if our study go doesn't go as planned and our results might be a little bit disappointing. So we have to have our dream courses in. We've got to be a bit realistic. And then we have to have the ones that are, we call the safety net courses. It is really important that you put your courses in in genuine order of preference. How are the places allocated? When the examination results are released in August, they are entered into the CAO computer. The computer checks each applicant's results for each course the applicant has applied for. The computer first determines if the applicant has the minimum entry requirements for the course. So, for example, if you have to pass English, Irish and Maths, the computer will check that you have passed these subjects. If the applicant meets the minimum entry requirements for the course, the applicant's points are calculated for this course choice. All eligible applicants are then placed in a list in order of the points they achieved for each course that they have applied for. The colleges then tell the CAO how many places are to be offered on each course. CAO then makes offers to the required number of applicants on each course, starting with the applicant with the highest points and working down until enough places have been offered. Normally, you are given three days to accept the offer, but it is very important to check the deadline date given with the offer. If you're offered a level eight and a level six or seven, Accepting one automatically rejects the other. And this is really important. You can only have one course. If you're offered a level eight and a level six or seven, you can only accept one of these. Rejecting an offer does not guarantee that you will get another. So think carefully before you reject anything. The points for a particular course depend on how many places are available on a particular course and how many applicants there are for that particular course. So if the demand is high for a course, then the points will go up. And if the demand is low for a course, the points will go down. Putting your course choices in in genuine order of preference is really, really important. Please do not guess what the points are going to be for the courses that you are interested in. Simply list your courses in genuine order of preference from the highest preference number one to the lowest preference number 10. If you are entitled to an offer of a course, you will be offered the highest preference that you are entitled to. As soon as you are offered a course, every other choice below this on your list is now removed. And this is really, really important to understand this point. If you're offered a course, everything below it is removed. There is no 
no chance that you will be offered anything lower than this from your list. You may be offered a course higher on your list, but not lower. So let's look at this as an example. Let's pretend that I get five. No, let's pretend that I get 420 points in my leaving cert. So if I get 420 points in my leaving cert, I do not get my first choice, Trinity, because that is 460. If I get 420 points in my leaving cert, I do not get my second choice because that is 435. However, I do get my third choice, UL, University of Limerick, Industrial Biochemistry. I got 420 points and UL is only 370. So I get offered Industrial Biochemistry in University of Limerick and everything below that is now gone. Everything else disappears from the list. But I notice that Maynooth have biological and biomedical sciences for 410 points and I'd like to do that. I don't want to go to Limerick now. I want to stay and go to Maynooth. Unfortunately, I am not going to be offered that course in Maynooth because that was number five on my list and I had enough points from my third choice. So I am offered my third choice and everything else below it disappears. And this is why it is really important to put your courses down in order of genuine preference. Some mistakes that people make. One, they don't put enough research into courses. They look at the title and not at the course content. So it's really important to go on the website and check out exactly what is contained in the modules. Another error is that some people list the courses in order of points instead of genuine preference. Some people underestimate their Leaving Cert results, others overestimate their re Leaving Cert results. Please be realistic. Some people target low point courses in the hope of getting college places. Many students target level eight courses only and ignore level six and seven courses, thereby dismissing the ladder of opportunity and the national framework of qualifications. And then other students do not consider courses outside certain geographic areas. Some of the do's and don'ts. Do choose 10 options if at all possible. Do list courses in order of genuine preference. Do make sure to have other options if you do not get your preference. For example, a PLC course. Do check the alert lists on the CAO website. Do not totally depend on getting your first, second or ter third choice. You may be offered your fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth or tenth choice. So be prepared for this and choose wisely. Do not disregard the genuine order of preference rule. Do not ignore level six and sevens. Do not target only low po point courses in the hope of getting to college. If a student does not get enough points in their Leaving Cert, they always have the option of ap applying to do a post Leaving Cert course or a PLC course. These are good recognised qualification and they also may allow students to go on to do a degree course in colleges based on their performance the following year. Students should apply from late November, December, directly to the PLC college offering the course. So students can still apply to be PLC colleges now. There are a large variety of courses available in PLC colleges. For example, business, art and design, media, beauty therapy, finance, travel tourism, social care, science, law, nursing, computers and pre-university courses. Each year, a number of our students go and do a PLC course and use that to get into a college or Technological University Dublin or an Institute of Technology the following year. There are some uh, programmes that allow students to access college on lower points. One is the Higher Education Access Route or the HERE scheme. And this is based on students' family income. So if you're below a certain family income, you may be entitled to go to college on lower points. So there are some deadlines. You have to apply before the 1st of February. You have to fill in the form on the CAO website by the 1st of March. And you have to submit your supporting documents. That means financial statements by the 15th of March. 
The Disability Access Route to Education, or DARE, is another scheme that allows students access college on reduced points. Again, you have to apply for the DARE scheme on the CAO form by the 1st of February. You have to fill in the forms online by the 1st of March and you have to post any supporting document to arrive in Galway by the 15th of March. If you need to contact the CAO about anything, use the Contact Us facility on the CAO website. Always quote your CAO application number in any communication with the CAO. If you post something to the CAO, for example, supporting documents, please always obtain a certificate of posting at the post office. In about May of each year, you will get a statement of application record from CAO. It is your responsibility to check all the courses shown. Are they in the correct order? And are they courses that you want? Have they got the correct codes? Does CAO have your correct exam number? Are all your exams mentioned? If you have any exemptions, are they mentioned? If you do not receive a statement of application from CAO by the 1st of June, please contact them immediately. So some tips on how to make a good decision. The most important tip is to research your courses properly and shortlist your courses. Gather, on the informa gather information from the about the courses on, from the websites that we've already mentioned, CAO, Qualifax, Careers Portal. Discuss your, discuss your options with parents, teachers, your guidance counsellor and others. So that's it for tonight. Anybody, any parent or any student who wants to talk about your course choices further or wants to apply to the CAO in school, please contact me via email if you like. And my email is the letter k, k O'Connell at hfcs.ie or contact Miss Perris, the other guidance counsellor, at c.perris at hfcs.ie. You can also telephone us and we're happy to speak to anybody over the phone or to speak to any student in person. Thank you.